All right, what is going on guys? Hess here and wanted to bring you guys this video and show you guys a pair of sneakers right here that I just picked up that causes a little bit of controversy for myself and maybe some other people out there. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this video. What is going on guys? Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys wanna shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. And if you guys hear a bunch of snorting and stuff behind me, my dogs are right down here eating their food and they're super, super loud, so I apologize. But I'm trying to get this video up as quick as I can because I want to show you guys what these look like on feet in this video. And if you guys do appreciate that, hit that thumbs up button and show you guys the support on this video. Um, I got two other pickups here that I'm gonna show you guys also. Shout out to Saucony and shout out to Puma for sending these my way. But I wanted to show you guys this pair that I ended up picking up from Bait. Um, today and actually I ordered them online as well I believe they actually have some still available on their website they didn't sell out only on Nike.com they sold out so this is a red box this is known as a Nike Vapor Street Flyknit now the reason why I say this causes a lot of controversy I'll show you guys the shoe so I don't know if this shoe actually looks very familiar to you guys or not it's supposed to be modeled after the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Elite which is the um, breaking two shoe again that the three athletes ran to try to break the marathon um, in under two hours. And just to point out in a different video, I mentioned that they did break two, but they actually didn't. You guys corrected me a lot in the comments. So just letting you guys know I read your guys' comments down there. But these look crazy and they look really weird and a lot of people may really like them, a lot of people may hate them. But now before I get into the controversy part, I'm gonna go ahead and throw these on feet because I can't wait anymore. I wanna see how they feel. So I personally think these look really dope on feet. So the cushioning system on this shoe is actually Nike React, which is the part that I think a lot of people do not understand. The midsole shape looks really similar to the Nike Zoom Vaporfly Elite and the Nike Zoom Vaporfly 4%, but it also looks really similar to the Nike Zoom Fly. Lots of confusion and here's where it gets even more complicated, so stick with me. So the Nike Zoom Fly features Lunar Lawn cushioning system. This, which has the same style, features Nike React, and then the Zoom Vaporfly 4% and the Zoom Vaporfly Elite feature Zoom X cushioning, which is different than this. So that is a lot of confusion. For shoes that look fundamentally the same or very close to the same, there's no real indicator of what type of cushioning is being put into the shoe. And I think that that is a huge miss from Nike. But if you guys could actually name these four shoes, what would you name them? Because it would make a lot more sense to call the Lunar one something Lunar related. This one is React, so maybe something React related. I don't understand why they decided to call this the Vapor Street. It doesn't, doesn't really make sense. I'm sort of lost at what exactly equals Vapor and what exactly equals Zoom, which is the other part. Like, why did they name Zoom X on the running shoe Zoom X? In general I've covered this many many times but it makes no sense it's not zoom technology it's a completely different technology now besides all of my rambling and hatred towards the fact that they can't name something I think that these are fire and they feel really really good on feet and this is actually designed for the consumer like myself so if you guys saw my zoom vaporfly 4% videos a lot of people were flaming me in the comment section saying you're not a runner those are racing shoes those aren't casual walking shoes even though it makes me 4% faster in the grocery store uh, nah, but like for real though, people were like, nah, you can't wear those. This is made for me though. This is a street shoe. This is made for all day comfort. This is not a performance shoe. And it doesn't have the carbon fiber plate on the bottom of these shoes that the other one has. So that was one thing that I was wondering. Does it have a carbon fiber plate? And just so you guys know, I will be doing a detailed review of these as well as a comparison between the other three or four shoes that I mentioned. And I'll also probably do a comparison between these and Nike Epic React Flyknits because a lot of people were wanting to know now that you guys do know that these have React in it, is it more comfortable or better than the Epic Flyknit React? And speaking from a casual perspective, it's something that I'm gonna be um, tackling in the future. But I do think that the shoe is a really dope shoe, but it just pains me to see Nike do the craziest stuff with the naming convention on some of these shoes to really confuse the consumer. Like, it makes no sense. I mean, leave a comment. Did you know that this had React in it or not? 
or did you think that this had Zoom X? Because this is more or less a spitting image of the ones that they actually had Zoom X in and these don't have it, it has React. I don't know. I just feel like there's a lot of misses going on and a lot of dots that need to be connected for the consumer. So hopefully I'll be able to connect some of those dots for you guys in some future videos. But all in all, regardless of how I'm sort of trashing these shoes or the naming convention of these shoes, I think that these are dope and I cannot wait to wear these more. Uh, on feet, they felt great. There was a lot of cushioning. It was definitely very, very soft. Definitely similar to the Epic React, but I definitely need to try Epic React on one foot and these on the other to let you guys really know which is the most comfortable. So I will be planning some videos into the future. Uh, so stay tuned to the channel again in the weeks to come. And just so you guys know, I will be giving you guys an update on these and a comparison probably to Adidas Boost because a ton of people are asking me how I feel these are comparison to Adidas Boost. And this is the 4Ds that I unboxed the other day. If you guys missed that video, go back and check. Supposedly they get more comfortable with wear. Um, time will tell, but uh, expect an update soon on this. So once again, you can see the name Nike Vapor Street Flying It. Retail was $180, so a $30 increase from the Epic React Flyknits. And is it worth the extra $30? I'll let you guys know that once I wear them a little bit more. I got the triple black version, super stoked, because this is the one I wanted. And you can see that crazy heel on them, just ridiculous looking. The Flyknit on these are pretty decent, but the weirdest part about it is it feels like it's an interesting new Flyknit or something, because this definitely has like a rubberized feel to it. It's hard to explain, but it's definitely grippy. And I really like it. It feels like it might be more weather resistant than um, some of the other fly nets out there. And you can see there's some breathability in the toe box area right there. It's not soft to the touch and it's not super stretchy, but it does have a very different fly knit, which is something that I didn't expect. I love the, the Nike branding of the big huge swoosh right here that kind of fades into the midsole. And then you could see right here, it's really, really cushiony. So one of the questions that I had about this shoe that I had to ask a Nike chat person about was, is this midsole full React or is it encased React? So what I mean by that is a lot of times when they use Lunar Lawn, it's not just this isn't the Lunar Lawn, this is like the harder casing. And then inside of it is actually the softer Lunar Lawn. So I asked and they said that this is all 100% React. So it's not an encased React like the Nike basketball shoes were last year that released. And if that's actually true, it makes sense because you can definitely feel it when you put these on. There is a ton of cushioning here, really, really crazy amounts of cushioning. And on the bottoms, you can see that this is actually a rubberized plate right here on the bottom. And they also have one here and here, but this is direct to the foam and this is direct to the foam in this section right here. But this could potentially be better than the Epic Reacts because it covers this section right here, which had a lot of heavy wear, and then this section also, for at least myself, on the Epic Reacts. And this is definitely rubber, so this is not gonna give you the same amount of wear and tear, at least in this section, as the other pair that I had. It might give you some wear and tear on this back section, though, which is similar to what happened, I believe, on my um, 4%. So if you can see, there's a lot more perforation on the tongue, and the material on the tongue is actually a lot more stretchy and breathable than anything else on the shoe. So I like that they added that in the tongue area. It'll make it a little bit more relaxed. In this section for me personally, which I like, on this section right here, you can see it looks a little bit deformed, which is a bit odd, but it actually makes sense because on the inside, um, you can actually feel that there's some extra padding right here on the shoe. So that's just extra padding on the collar, which I do like. So even though it makes it look a little funky, um, I don't mind the extra padding at all. Then the inside just says Nike Sportswear on the bottom. Then on the back, you can see it has a little pull tab on it. Uh, I think overall, I mean, I'm a sucker for new shoes and new technology and just crazy looking shoes. And I think that this is one of those ones that I'm super happy to get. I've been honestly waiting to get these since I saw the very first images of them. So I'm super happy to get these in hand and on feet. So that's all we have for this shoe, but if you guys wanna see the detailed review or the comparison between this and the Epic React, whichever video you guys wanna see featuring this shoe, um, leave a comment in the comment section and then give this video a thumbs up so I can know that you guys are actually really interested in this and more about this shoe. So moving on, I got a couple other pairs of shoes that I wanted to show you. Uh, one from uh, the good folks over at Saucony. Shout out to John for reaching out to me and sending me these sole box joints right here. Now these came out a long time ago, and I do have some other shoes with this technology. And um, this one is one that I was really excited to check out and actually see in person. So this is a Soulbox collaboration. It's the Shadow 5000 with a knit upper and Everrun on the midsole. Now, if you don't know what Everrun is, it's basically Saucony's answer to Adidas Boost. And as I mentioned in a lot of other videos, in fact, dating back to last year, Everrun's probably the closest thing that we have on the market to Adidas Boost. It really is very, very comfortable and very responsive. 
and I love this technology. And I have, I think, three different shoes now with Everrun. Tried and true, they're great, but none of the ones that I've had in the past have a knit upper. So the fact that these have a really breathable knit upper just makes these even better for myself. So as you can see, it's kind of a cool pink and black colorway, and this knit is super, super nice. It's very soft, and there's a lot of perforation in the toe box area, which I like. Uh, the, the tongue is detached, which is a huge plus for me. I love that. And then you have a leather pool tab with Saucony logo on it. And then also this is kind of cool. It's like a hyperfuse type material, a fused material of the Saucony logo. So it definitely has that same Saucony vibe of the 5000s. Same as the heel cup and a little bit of reflective material. And then here is the Everrun. And again, I mentioned this many, many times. It's really, really something. It's really soft material and it has everyone on the bottom here and you can see the gum sole. Sticky, sticky, nice gum sole on these ones. And then here's a little nice icing on the cake. If you guys can see that, this liner is just crazy, crazy soft. And then some nice suede on the back. So Saucony always has really solid materials on the premium products for sure. And I think these things look amazing. So thank you to John and the Saucony crew for sending these my way. All right, so last up we have another pair from Puma. I can't believe they sent me another pair. It's crazy, man. They sent me, this is like my fourth pair in a month. Those guys over at Puma, are not playing around. Thank you so much for sending me another one of the 50th year anniversary of the Puma Suede. And this one is my favorite one out of the four pairs of shoes that they sent. That's saying quite a bit because there's two of the other ones that I really like. But this one is a banger. Look at that. It is straight gold. I love gold. This is crazy. It says 1986 on the side right back here. But this is an insanely gold looking shoe with kind of a clear milky sole on these things, but they look they look crazy, man. I think this is just one of those shoes that you walk by, people are like, whoa, those are nuts. I think that these are releasing in March, so um, shout out to myself for getting team early for once. But thank you to Puma for sending me another pair. I'll show you what they look like on feet. All right, so that's pretty much the end of the video. Thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, if you guys want to see more videos on these and the technology here, leave some comments and also give the video a thumbs up. If you guys are new to my channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to be notified of when I post videos. I try to get them up around 3 or 4 p.m. PST, but it varies obviously day to day. Anyway, thank you guys again for supporting the channel. Much appreciated to everybody out there. And just a heads up, I do have two more Jordans that I'm planning on unboxing. Actually, there's like four or more pairs of shoes, honestly, but I can't get all of them here because two of them were delayed because we got snow in Oregon. Whoa. The roads were basically like shut down for like three days because it snowed like an inch or two. It's hilarious out here. But I have two of the four and I'll be doing another video showing you guys some of those very, very soon. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching the video. We'll catch you guys for some more videos very soon. Peace, guys.